it. You'll like it. A little dab will do ya. One cent bubble gum, ten cent candy bars, fifteen cent hamburgers. Hamburgers. When a dollar went a long way, and so did 24 hours. The 60s and the 70s, dwelling place of the lost generation. We who grew up in this era had no real heroes. Our role models came from the imaginations of others. Our meager lives were formed by and revolved around weekly installments of our favorite TV programs. Welcome to a place that your parents didn't understand. A place that exists somewhere between the forefront of recollectable memory and the edge of everyday thought. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome home. to another exciting episode of Bass Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, with our other host, uh, Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television, and as you probably guessed by all this stuff up here, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, phenomenas of the 60s, Beverly Hillbillies. And not just Beverly Hillbillies, but we're gonna discuss the entire uh, Mayberry versus Hooterville controversy, which we know is very big right now. Uh, of course, uh, when we refer to Mayberry and Hooterville, we're referring to Mayberry as the entire uh, Tri-City, Mayberry, uh, Mount Pilot, and uh, Raleigh area. And Hooterville, uh, we're talking about Hooterville and Pixley, and not to mention Bunch Bug Tussle. Or Bunch. even um, Beverly Hills, but... Right. Yeah. <laughs> but that's... So, so to give you an idea of what we're discussing, uh, we're uh, Mayberry, of course, Andy Griffith Show, and Mayberry RFD, and Gomer Pyle, and is that it? I think Basically, that's it. Well, they yeah. did take the character Goober and put him onto Hee Haw. Yeah. But I don't that, think that's, that's a very really tenuous a, that's connection. A, yeah, that's a, yeah. a stringy spin-off kind yeah. of thing. And then, of course, on the, uh, uh, the so that's the Mayberry side. And then there's the the Paul Henning universe side. Of course, Paul Henning was the one who created things like Beverly Hillbillies and and Green Acres and Petticoat Junction, and I think that's it on that side. Yeah, that's unless I'm missing. Much, yeah, that's pretty much. All so. Right. Um, uh, of course, these were like uh, the the mainstay of uh, of CBS's uh, schedule in the 60s, uh, and uh, allowed them to pretty much vault ahead. Although the critics absolutely hated all these shows, the public loved them. So uh, they were on the air for years and years. And then in 1970, uh, uh, the uh, the high ups at CBS decided, well, uh, we don't want any of these rural comedies anymore because they're not making. They're not getting the right demographics for the audience and all this, and we're all getting all these old people. So so they all got canceled all at once, and ironically, it uh, allowed uh, shows like All in the Family and MASH to get on the air because there was these huge holes in the schedule. But anyways, uh, but that's uh, for another show. Today, we're talking about Mayberry versus Hooterville, and I'll turn it right over to Wilbert with his first point for the evening. Well, by golly, when you look at these shows, you look and there's... Um just the, the characters involved here. We can look at the um, the the camaraderie between Andy and and um, and Barney. Mm -hmm. There's just they just worked so well together as a team. Although Barney always felt like he should probably be the leader or the one to stand out. It's always Andy who is well definitely the star. So he always knows what's going on and how to figure out every problem. You know and it's. Like he can do it simply. He didn't need to have his gun with him, you know. He's the sheriff and all, but yet. And then he, you go home, and here's little Opie and Amy mm -hmm. and, and... Well, something both shows, <coughs> both types of shows had that they don't have really a lot on TV anymore is the the uh, family matriarch. You had Aunt B, who was definitely the cornerstone of Andy's household. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you had Granny. You had Kate Bradley women that were the um, the cornerstone, the focus of the family, you yeah, know, pretty uh, much of the, show, the anchor, really. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've really got that anymore. You don't see that today. You, 
You saw it a little bit in the 70s with stuff like uh, Maud, is the one I could think offhand. Well, Maud yeah. is about Maud. <laughs> right, well, yeah, basically. <laughs> but, I mean, but, yeah, you don't see that today, really. You don't see a woman being pretty much, which is which is ironic, considering all the, uh, uh, the, the strides that women's rights have made between the 60s and the 80s. Well, I mean, it, it's there, but it's, it's not as... Um, and not as uh, blatant where these shows were, I mean, they, they focused on the the males that were in the show, and yet they were there, the, the ladies were there, I think that's what it is, because now you do have shows that are, are, are well, they, what, uh, uh, Murphy Brown or yeah. uh, something. Those, you know. are, those are like 80, you know, this is where <coughs> the woman was home, that, I mean, was that's, home yeah. right, that's the she, difference. She, she, she was the rock of the show, more or less. Mm-hmm. And I don't think shows have that anymore, but it's interesting that all of these shows yeah, have hung that. On because, because I mean, that. Granny was actually Jed's mother-in-law. <coughs> yeah. Right. She's Ellie's grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kate was actually, Uncle Joe was actually the oldest member of the family, but Kate was the one in charge. No, well, that's because Uncle Joe was moving kind of slow. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he was asleep. Then when, they got, when, when Kate went away and Joe had to run it, boy, they had to bring in uh, June Lockhart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that was that was interesting. <laughs> he just couldn't do it alone. By golly. Okay, but um, then you've got your uh, your definite comical characters. You've got uh, well, well, Barney was. Probably mm -hmm. the comical character of the Andy Griffith thing, but then before, um, oh, well, Goober, 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 weren't funny. Goober <laughs> and Gomer are, but see, Gomer was just so so darn comical that he got his own oh, show, <laughs> and it just left Goober there to run the gas station uh -huh. by himself. Hey, you've got your, um, well, Otis. Otis. <laughs> Well, let's let, let's not forget Floyd, for goodness sake. Well, Floyd, oh. yeah, you, you, you can't forget Floyd, no, no, he's, <laughs> Floyd, he's. Uh, but he, he had a business. Yeah, everybody, that was an interesting thing, too. Everybody just about had a business. Except Otis, but I guess his Otis was to be the town drug. town yes. drug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was his business. Yeah. Back in the days when you had a town, town drug, drunk. they probably advertised needed mm -hmm. town drunk. Right. They just you had to give Andy something to do because they sure didn't go out and bust those moonshiners. <laughs> well, yeah. moonshiners were out there. They didn't come into town that often, I guess. <clears throat> and it's like every... <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Howard. What was Howard? Howard Sprig. Yeah, he was like was the his, editor uh, of the. Um, what, what did he do? He still lived with his mother. I mean, what was his? his was he the? Did he run the paper? Did I he think just he hang did. around in the barber shop and wait for some news to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that was like the nerve center of the town, you know. <laughs> what did they do? A monthly Floyd's paper barber that came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More like a periodical than a newspaper. Uh, and he was always so <laughs> hip. And there wasn't yeah, really a lot you know, going the, on. The so. Mayberry thing, they were like, um, like a, like um, a warmity. Isn't that the word they use now for these shows? That they're funny, but gee, don't they just strike a nerve? Don't you just know every things like that happen right. and everything? Mm -hmm. Where the uh, Petticoat Junction. Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies was out and out comedy. Right. Because they were so outlandish. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons that those shows went off was people from the hills started becoming offended at the way they were portrayed on these shows. Yeah. Saying, you know, look, we're not idiots. We're, <laughs> well, we're, we're, we, we know about the world. We're not... Kept well, up here Jethro wasn't hill. an idiot. He had his sixth grade education. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was a, a, what a brain going to be a brain surgeon, a frog right. man, um, <laughs> astronaut at one point. Astronaut at one point. Yeah, yeah. he let's say he just wanted to be anything yeah. where there would be girls. Yeah, yeah. Playboy, international <laughs> Playboy. Though. Well, that was a job. He directed the movies. He yeah. was a he was he was J B. <laughs> yes, J B. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie Mae was his yes girl, and he was, uh, he was a secret agent. He was double out seven. Yeah. <laughs> but was it, you know, th those situations were so far out, and uh, the Mayberry situations were, well, were you know, a little bit more realistic. Re yeah. Realistic, yeah, yeah. Things that really happened. Yeah. I have, I have an aunt who grew up in Kentucky, and she says, uh, you can tell I have an aunt, and I grew up near there because I don't say aunt. <laughs> Uh. And she says, you know, sometimes I just watch Andy Griffith and cry because it reminds me of home so much. So I guess that's how real that was. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, then you go to stuff like Green Acres, which is almost, I mean, of the of the three shows on that uh, of that area, that's like 
like the most surrealistic of all of them because it's just like <laughs> I mean Surreal. I mean it was it was so ahead of its time of like it's like 